let's shift gears. Let's talk about uh, the NSF and i which I know has been a fabulous uh, success. And actually, in New York, Columbia is part of one of these i programs. Uh, so uh, tell us how the NSF adopted the Lean Startup model and, and how you're measuring your progress. So uh, just for, for background, uh, this Lean Launchpad class, which I teach here, Stanford, Berkeley, taught a couple hundred <coughs> other places now, um, has now been adopted by the National Science Foundation as the basis for commercializing all science in the United States. Period. End of discussion. Um, and how this happened was when I first taught the class at Stanford, I decided to blog the class because it was a science experiment. And I would write about, here's what I taught in class one and two and three. And even my co-author, Bob Dorf, that was the most boring blog series I ever wrote. Because, you know, here's what I did, here's what worked, here's whatever. But I thought there might be somebody reading it. And about 30 days after the class ends, I get a phone call. You know, ring, ring, ring. Hi, hi. Steve, you don't know me. I'm from the US government. We need your help. Now, because <laughs> I'm a smart ass, I went, hey, you know, the government got my help for four years during Vietnam. I'm kind of done, you know. <laughs> Who are you? He said, well, I'm, you know, Errol Arkelik. I'm the program manager for the SBIR program at NSF. And, uh, you know, and blah, 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 he started talking. I said, what's the NSF? And like, you can sister. He said, National Science Foundation? I said, what's that? Now, for those of you who don't know, um, it's a $7 billion government organization that funds all basic science research except for medical <coughs> in the United States. If you're a university professor or grad student in, uh, doing basic science, the odds are you're going to apply for an NSF grant. And what you may not know is Congress 30 years ago required all government research organizations, NSF, NIH, DOD, <coughs> DARPA, et cetera, to put away essentially 3% of all their funds for any scientist who wants to commercialize any technology that they've invented. And that's called the SBIR program. Another side program is called SB. The good news is we do this as a country. The bad news is Congress never bothered to ask in those 30 years so how are you doing with those investments? Uh, because essentially, we've been giving away cars without requiring driver's ed. And the returns have been horrific. Uh, why? Because you give the scientists half a million bucks, what are they going to do? More science. Uh, but not really know like, like how to build a company. And so when Errol read this stuff, he said, you've just invented the scientific method for entrepreneurship. And I would have never made that claim. What he said is, what you're requiring your students to do is hypothesis testing. Well, Steve, scientists have spent their whole lives hypothesis testing. You're just making them do it outside the building. So why don't you uh, put together a class for scientists and engineers? Make a very long story short, we prototyped the class, and then it was so successful, we taught University of Michigan and Georgia Tech how to teach it, and then we taught 11 other universities, including Columbia, to be part of the program. We now teach 400. Uh, teams a year uh, in the U.S. who want to commercialize their probably one of the largest uh, incubators and accelerators in the country um, or right up there on how to commercialize their science. And what happened about a month ago is I got a call that says, well, we've kind of changed the program. Well, what happened? Well, for the last couple of years, we've been holding this, uh, uh, what's called the NSF Innovation Corps. It's been voluntary. That is, if you wanted to get an SBIR grant, you didn't have to take this class. So we have data now going back 30 years about how successful have been those people who didn't take the class. That is, when they apply for a grant or, or venture capital funding, what's their success rate? And the answer is unchanged about for 30 years, 18%. <coughs> well, why are you calling me? Well, we just actually got the data from what happened to the people who took the innovation core. What's their percentage success? 60%. And they said, we just stopped the program for the people not taking the class because we believe it's unethical to continue the experiment. <laughs> uh, so now in the United States, it's required to even show up at the SBIR conference. You have to watch my lectures and talk to 20 <laughs> customers. Uh, and so that is some real data. Now, by the way, with all the caveats, Funding isn't an indication of success as a company and blah, blah, blah. But these are peer-reviewed, you know, this is a peer-review thing. So it, 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 there is some meaning that there's probably some value in taking this class and doing this process. What this happened, what happened though, is um, 
so the National Science Foundation adopted this, then ARPA-E, which is the Energy Department, adopted this for commercialization. And then I got chased by uh, a school called UCSF that um, teaches life sciences. And uh, they said, we want you to do this class for life sciences. And I said, it won't work for life sciences. You know, it's, you know, you have a, a target and you build a, you know, a biologic drug for oncology that is a cure for cancer. And all you need to do is figure out where the bags of money go. You know, what do you need? <laughs> Customer development or lean startup process. And they said, Steve, you really don't understand how this works, do you? I said, no. It's a, and they said, well, what you just talked about is a very small corner case about all the money being invested in, you know, therapeutics, diagnostics, devices, and digital health. Uh, and in fact, that life sciences venture capital has just collapsed in the last couple of years because no one's making any money. The problem is that we were investing in all this stuff, and we really were investing in all the science without, again, asking them, do they understand anything about business? We've just run this experiment. Does it work? Sounds a little like the experiment you were running for the NSF. So make a long story short, we're now offering this class for life sciences starting October 1st. And this time, instead of waiting for the results, the National Institute of Health is sending their own teams here. And hopefully, they're going to adopt this program for how we, do, how we commercialize life sciences in the United States in 2014. And so my goal is to change how all of our government research organizations commercialize our uh, basic science. Um, and after that, and I don't know, I'll rest on the seventh day or something. But, um, <laughs> uh, it's been kind of a lot of fun.